In this video, I'm going to show the analysis that preceded a real-time trade in the US dollar against the Canadian dollar in the 4-hour time frame. Hopefully you will be able to see how the alignment of several contextual factors led to the open short position you see on the chart. In this video you will be able to start understanding how you can learn how to trade Forex successfully by understanding the logic of the market without relying on tricks or anything like that. Without further ado, let's begin the analysis. In the far left of the chart, you can see that between numbers 1 and 6, the market created lower highs and lower lows with a certain degree of consistency that did not leave much margin for doubt about the strength and dominance of sellers in relation to the buyers in this market. Observe that in number 3, I drew a horizontal line to mark the turning point of the market vectors between 2 and 4. This black turning point line marks the level in which the buyers from number 2 lost the battle to the sellers from number 3. In the market vector between number 6 and number 7 something interesting begins to happen in the battle between buyers and sellers. Notice that number 7 pokes the high number 5, but it does not close above it. Observe also that candle number 7 has a relatively large upper tail, which means that stronger buyers appeared somewhere in the chain of causality of candle 7 up to the point where they could pierce high number 5. However, sellers were still dominant in that area, and eventually they brought the market down to the close of number 7. This is an important area in this chart because it marks the beginning of an undecisive market sentiment, which is what gave birth to the weird price action between number 7 and number 8. Observe that in this area, sellers are clearly trying to bring the market down, but they seem to have a hard time doing it. This is due to the presence of new and more powerful buyers in the area. We can objectively see that sellers are still a little stronger than these buyers because between 7 and 8, the market creates lower lows at the same time that buyers keep hitting the same wall in the short horizontal line between 7 and 8. Even though sellers are a little bit stronger, the appearance of these buyers imply that they are about to shift the control of the market, which is what begins to happen between number 8 and 9. This is the market vector that begins to shift the flow of the market because the buyers that were constantly hitting that wall between 7 and 8 were now able to break that wall. Beyond that, in number 9 we can see that these buyers were able to poke the highs number 5 and number 7 with some degree of violence. Even though sellers attempted to appear again in number 9, the market flow is now in the hands of these buyers until they find a new pack of sellers who are able to stand a fight. That's exactly what happens in number 11 and number 13. The buyers from number 8 and number 10 are now facing the sellers responsible for generating the market movements from 3. If you observe carefully, the apparent strength of both players is relatively the same if we compare the volatility of the market vectors going down between 3 and 4, and the market vectors going up between 10 and 11. The first evidence that we have a considerable fight between these two players happens in number 11 where buyers meet the sellers from the turning point line from number 3. The market goes down immediately to number 12, which is sort of a support and resistance line created between 8 and 11. We must consider that sellers from number 3 were not capable of creating a lower low than 10 once they appeared again in number 11. However, we must also consider that buyers were clearly in control of the market between 10 and 11, and before the market shifts control again, certain key areas must be tested a few times for our convenience. Buyers pick the market up again in number 12 and price meets the sellers from number 3 again in number 13. Here is where the subtle clues start to take place for the trade you see opened in the chart. Observe that candle 13 is a fractal candle, plus the fact that we have a slight reversal divergence happening between high 11 and high 13. The contextual buildup to trigger this short trade dwells in the fact that after candle 13, the market reduces its general volatility, and in number 14 and 15, it tests the turning point line that we drew in the far left of the chart in number 3. That means this is definitely a level that is not yet obsolete in this market, and it is also a pretty good level for sellers to take control of this market assuming they will do this at all. Observe how we must always maintain ourselves one step ahead of the market. Up to the current candle, the objective measurement of price tells us that buyers are in control, but our subjective analysis of price tells us that sellers might have already taken control of the market again, but they haven't really acted that out yet, which is exactly the moment to trigger a sell position. The final nail in the coffin of this trade is in number 15, which is another fractal candle with three different attributes that go beyond the notion of being a fractal candle. 
Notice that it has a bearish quality at the same time that it tested the turning point line from number 3 for the fourth time, and it is also an outside candle in relation to the immediately previous candle. This was the final contextual element to trigger the short trade at the open of the next candle as it is marked by the down red arrow. However, before triggering this trade, we had to make sure the potential risk management parameters of this trade made sense, otherwise we would have to pass the opportunity. This is another important thing to remember. There will be a lot of times where your trades will make sense in technical terms, but they will fail to meet the necessary requirements for the correct risk management rules. Notice that we are relying on the idea that sellers from number 3 will appear again after number 13 after all the elements that happened between 11 and 15. A good place to put a stop loss order is a few pips above the high number 3. This makes sense because if we are correct in our analysis, the sellers from number 3 will certainly not let the market poke high number 3. On the other hand, if we are incorrect about our reading of the market, the trade will hit the stop for a small loss, which is also okay if we guarantee that we always maintain ourselves in the safe risk-reward ratio parameters. We also need to come up with a profit target idea that makes sense in technical terms as well as in risk management terms. The most obvious level that fits both of these requirements is the low number 10, which is a good place for buyers to appear again, and it also represents a 1 to 3 risk reward ratio for our trade idea roughly speaking. Let's see how this trade turns out, and then we will discuss a few more interesting things about it. Our short trade idea was clearly successful as you can see in the chart. Let's try to quickly sum up the elements that were part of our contextual analysis. In a first moment, we must approach the market in an attempt to understand the different levels of strength between buyers and sellers. We do this by analyzing highs and lows and by subjectively comparing the volatility of market vectors. In a second moment, we must try to figure out which of these highs and lows show the keys to understand the battle between the buyers and sellers. In a third moment, we can try to employ the momentum analysis and a more refined candlestick reading of subtle nuances in price action to collect logically consistent elements for a trade idea. Notice that most traders usually start the analysis with the last element. In other words, they start the analysis by looking for a specific trigger point or trick they might have learned. This is clearly a mistake for a few different reasons. Without subjectively trying to understand what's going on between buyers and sellers, you simply will not be able to make sense out of any kind of setup technique or trick to get in and out of your trades. Another interesting thing I want to talk about regarding this trade is the psychological dimension in which traders find themselves in a trading situation like this. If you have the Fractal Flow Strategy video course, you know that there are almost 40 different psychological traps that traders must avoid in several market situations. These psychological traps are mostly silent, and that's why they can be so dangerous. One specific cognitive bias or psychological trap we must be able to avoid in a trade like this is called hyperbolic discounting, which is the tendency to prefer sooner and smaller rewards over later and larger rewards. For you to maintain yourself balanced through the whole course of a trade like you saw in this video, you must be able to override the hyperbolic discounting reflex that we all have, otherwise you will simply close your trade when you see a small profit in the terminal. This would obviously undermine the whole structure of our trade. This is just one example of how one single psychological trap can ruin a well-constructed trade idea. Needless to say, there is a lot more than what meets the eye in a trade like this. In these videos, we only talk about the technical side and the risk management side of things, but there is a whole world you must also master if you want to learn how to trade Forex successfully. This is the main motivation behind the creation of the Fractal Flow Strategy video course. Explaining all the things that you must understand to learn how to trade Forex successfully is completely outside the scope of short YouTube videos like this. We must dive into fairly advanced concepts and ideas to truly separate ourselves from the rest of the market. If you wish to learn how to trade Forex successfully and become a professional trader who is able to see what 99.9% .9 of the market cannot see in a price chart, check out the Fractal Flow Strategy video course in our strategy store. We have about 4 hours of highly advanced material covering technical analysis, risk management and trading psychology in a specific way that makes all these three important ideas deeply connected with one another. That's it for this video.
If you like the work we do in this channel and wish to support us, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like the video and leave your feedback below in the comment section. We also have lots of other videos with market analysis similar to this one, and videos about general market wisdom that will enrich your view of the market. Once again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.